Okay, okay. everyone. Let's get our attention here. Libertarian. All right. Higher. Better? Ah, okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to the Libertarian Party, California Annual Convention and our rally here at the Day of the Capitol. I'm uh, Kevin Takanaga, the host of this cruise tour, uh, state chairman. Um, and I want to thank all of you for coming out. I know it's a Friday, I know it's a work day for you, and we have a full weekend ahead of us, but it's pretty exciting for us to be here. Um, legally. We have a permit, thank you. Um, <laughs> for those of you who went to advocacy training earlier uh, today, thank you for doing that. You're going to be going, and some of, we have a team in there right now actually meeting with uh, uh, one of the staffers, you know, yes. And um, so they'll be back out here, um, and then at two we're going to have a few more. So um, I've asked the people who are in the training, for those who are going to go inside and talk with the legislators, to please help uh, guide you as to what to say, what not to say, and it, there's a real process that they learned today. And I'll turn this over to Gail real quick, and you can talk a little bit more about that. But um, let me kind of open mic here. Um, we've got this place for a while, so we want to get the party leaders up here, party members who want to talk. Um, our vice presidential candidate and former uh, judge Jim Gray is here. <laughs> All right. Number other people from all over the state. So let me turn this over to Mr. Morgan and uh, let him take it from there. Welcome to Sacramento. Yeah, thank you. I can say that, I live here. <laughs> so, uh, what we commonly refer to this as the belly of the beast. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we're glad to have you all out here. Glad to have you in Sacramento. Spend your money here, improve our economy, and uh, have fun. When you go in to see the legislators, one thing I will ask. Uh, those of you that were at the training already know this, but we'll give you a couple topics that we're going to be covering. You'll have one topic per uh, <coughs> legislator's office. Please, please, please stay on topic. Don't introduce any other ideas. If you're talking about gun safety, don't bring up property rights. If you're talking about property rights, don't bring up guns. Um, pretty much if we, if we branch out, we're going to lose our, our captive audience. So uh, that's, that's probably the strongest thing I can say. Advocacy training has a lot to do with not being here. Most advocating is done one-on-one -on -one with the staff of the legislator. We got a rare opportunity to come to the Capitol and talk to the staff at the Capitol, but you guys really, you're gonna take this message back with you to home. You're gonna talk to the district office, you're going to be talking to those folks. You'll get to know those people on a first name basis. They'll know you on a first name basis. That's when you're doing the work. Being an advocate is a year round job, okay? It's not seasonal. So just throw that out there. Okay, once again, very happy to have you here. We're going to have some other people coming up here to talk, but uh, enjoy the convention. Got a lot of good speakers going to be up, a um, couple of really good panels to hear. And then, of course, the business we take care of every year. So, Kevin? All right. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Let me introduce uh, Richard Winger from, um, Richard is the, from Ballot Access News officially, but I like to call him the world's foremost expert on ballot, uh, <laughs> ballot yes. access and yes. um, election law in the country. All right. All right. Thanks. Uh, as, I, as I said at breakfast, and some of you were at breakfast, Prop 14 has caused a total absence of minor party candidates for Congress on the California ballot in 2012. That's the first time that's happened since 1966. We're the only large state that, that had a, a ballot monopoly of Democrats and Republicans in the ballot for Congress. But it doesn't just hurt us. It hurts major party voters, too. In the 31st Congressional District last year in San Bernardino, 
because of the freakish way Prop 14 screens candidates, a Democratic district, it's so Democratic, it voted 56% for Obama and 57% for Feinstein, and it's almost 50% Hispanic, but due to 14, it freakishly ended up with two rather conservative Republicans on the ballot. Nobody else, no right in space. So what happens in an election like that? There's so many voters that saw two Republicans on the ballot and they didn't want to vote for a Republican. 27% of the voters just left it blank. Now what kind of an election system do we have when at the general election itself, which is where people elect members of Congress, 27% of the people come to the polls, look at their ballot, and leave it blank. So I will hope to find a sponsor for a bill to repeal Prop 14. I think he wants me to wind up. No, 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 keep going. Uh, there's also another, I'll, I'll just mention one more bill in just one minute here. Assemblyman Pan of Sacramento has introduced a bill to make it illegal to pay registration drive workers on again? a per registration uh, drive. Again? Again. Oh, the governor okay. vetoed it last year. I'm going to go to Assemblyman Pan's office, hope to speak to somebody, and, and be positive. I, I'm going to say, if, if this is what you want to do, since the only way parties can stay in the ballot is by increasing the registration, can't you please amend your bill and include a provision in that bill lowering the number of registrations? Now, I think we'll be okay anyway, but the Peace and Freedom Party, they are 50,000 short, and I, I would hope they'll help me in this. So that's about it. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to be here all, you're going to be here all weekend? Um, partly uh, on each day. Okay. Some each day. All right. So Richard will be here part of the week, parts of the weekend. So if you have any questions on ballot access in California or in other parts of the country, Richard's your go-to guy. He's also got a newsletter. I believe we are including in everyone's uh, registration package. So, okay. Let's turn to Alex. Alex Fidel from San Diego County. Alex is a, a recently announced candidate for um, mayor of Encinitas, am I correct? And why don't you go ahead right. and talk about hey, that hey, hey. and yeah. what else you got for going down in, in San Diego. Yeah. How's it going? Um, so I'm from the San Diego Libertarian Party. Uh, we've been working on uh, voter outreach, going to college campuses, really trying to ignite um, uh, people that believe in liberty, um, especially in my age group, because um, uh, we need to get out there and start voting in these primaries, and um, I, I definitely want to urge my uh, assemblyman to overturn top two because I had two Republicans to choose from, and it wasn't <laughs> much of a choice. Too sad. <laughs> and there's also, for those that, that are interested, there's a NDAA nullification bill coming up. Uh, they're yeah. voting on it on Tuesday, so it could be a bit of an urgent thing to try to get them to yeah. pass. Yeah. Um, I started lobbying my um, city council over medical cannabis. Um, and I hit a brick wall. Mm -hmm. The only person I, I thought supported it um, said, um, basically, he's uh, looking to get reelected, so he doesn't want to <laughs> go out, take on this issue, which uh, is very sad because patients are suffering, and we have a, 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 an initiative coming up in 2014. They won't even issue their statements on it. Um, he told me to contact the other legis or the other city council members and. They've uh, pretty much ignored me, um, and they said it was a divisive issue. They don't want to, they don't want to take on. But um, what about it, what, it isn't a segregation a divisive issue? They would get some people opposing it because I think medical cannabis is civil rights. Um, so we recently passed a proposition. We used to have an appointed mayor. Um, we passed a proposition for it to be directly elected, and I looked at it and I laughed because I didn't think I'd ever. Uh, be running for office, but I decided, you know, these guys are going to either, they're going to inherit the, uh, the, uh, um, the cannabis legislation and then turn it down, and they're not doing anything for civil liberties. We had a shooting and, it, uh, and it, they brought out the, you know, the armored vehicles and the militarized police. So uh, a few of my platforms are to, you know, end the police militarization, tell the DHS to take a hike, um, nullify yeah. legal tender laws so that people can use alternative currencies and obviously uh, re repeal of uh, Prohibition 10. Uh, I'm going to 
I'm looking forward to the process. Hope to open the debates um, and, and see what happens. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good morning. It's morning. Good to see morning. everybody out here. I'm Evan McMahon. I'm the executive director of the Libertarian National Campaign Committee. And uh, this morning, for those of you who, who weren't in attendance, we had a, a, a campaign or a, a advocacy advocacy training program to talk about going in here and lobbying legislators. Well, I'm a campaign manager, I run campaigns, but before doing that, in 2000 and 2001, I was actually a registered lobbyist in that building. <laughs> uh, so I was a little evil. Uh, <laughs> so now, instead of lobbying uh, in Indiana, I work as a citizen activist. I go in and I actually do the same things that I was doing as a lobbyist, just with no money or perks, and I go in and I talk to my state legislators. Uh, over the years, I've built up a, a good relationship with my state legislators so that I can work with them on bills and, and help them advance the cause of liberty in their legislation. The important thing to remember when you're going in here and talking to these ladies and gentlemen today is they are not libertarians. They're Republicans and Democrats. They are not libertarians. They will not be with us on every single issue, and for most of them, they're going to be with us on no issues. But what you can do is by talking to them and giving them your point of view, talking to them about the Constitution, sharing the libertarian philosophy with them, you can move them towards liberty. You can get them to start to think about the constitutional impacts of the laws that they're passing. You can be that advocate and outreach for when they have a question about the constitutionality or the civil liberties of a particular legislation, they can reach out to you. In Indiana, I'm that guy for the Libertarian Party. Whenever a, a Republican or Democrat legislator says, hey, I really don't want to take off the Libertarians because those guys are going to show up outside. They're going to hold the Fourth Amendment rally and there's going to be 500 people out there. Let's call Evan. Evan will know if this bill passes Libertarian smell test or not. You guys can do the exact same thing by doing what you're doing here today, which is going in there, meeting with them, being pleasant, uh, listening to what they're doing, tell them about what you're interested in, what you would like to see happen, and develop those first stages of communication. Uh, open up that line of dialogue so that you can come to them in the future and say, hey, not really liking where you're taking this bill. There's a couple of things that you could do to make it a little bit better. That's the first steps. Now, my job, is while you guys are doing that, my job is to go and get somebody elected to be in there so that you actually have a libertarian in there. It's important for the state party and the national party and organizations like the Libertarian National Campaign Committee to continue to focus on campaigning. But the state chairs and the county chairs need the party members to be able to come out and do things like this as well as assisting on campaigns. By doing this, we are at least advancing the message of liberty in the halls of the State House while we're trying to get people elected to implement the message of liberty in the State House. So I'm going to be here all week. I'm going to be speaking at the convention a couple of times, I'm sure. Uh, so feel free to come up and talk to me about uh, experience and advocacy and any uh, campaign information you might like. So I'm really glad to see all of you guys here today and have fun and uh, knock them dead. All right. All right. Thank you, Evan. Couple time zones. Too. Okay. Yeah. We didn't walk. <laughs> All right. Mr. Pajunas. Bring out Brett Pajunas from the uh, great state of Nevada. Nevada. Uh, Silver State. Yeah. The state with a part time legislature. Yeah. 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 How are you guys doing? Yeah. This Woo. is exciting. Yeah. How excited are you guys? We've never been here in front of the Capitol before. Round of applause, let's go. Yeah. Let me tell you guys something. My name is Brett DeJunis. I'm on the Libertarian National Co uh, Committee. I represent California, Nevada, Arkansas, New Mexico, and New York. I get to travel a lot with all the wow. things that I do. And I gotta tell you guys, it's exciting. All across the country, we have libertarianism on the rise. Yeah. Everywhere you go, you're hearing it now in mainstream media. When did you ever hear that before? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's because of the efforts of you guys. You guys are killing it. We got to keep up everything that we've been doing. The next election cycle is going to be amazing. Why? Because we have people like Evan. We have people like Judge Hugh Gray. We have the LNCC. We have all the support that we've never had, ever. And we got to continue going out there and pushing our message. This last election cycle, what happened? Amendment 64 in Colorado. Who knows what that is? Yeah. Exactly. Recreational use of marijuana is now legal in Colorado. Also in Washington. It's on the bill, I think, here in California again. I know it's up in, uh, in Nevada. What are we doing? That is a libertarian issue. The Democrats, they cannot take responsibility for that. The Republicans, they absolutely cannot take any credit for that. But we can. We founded the party in, 17, in, 19, 17, in 1971. That was one of our main principles. We have not flip-flopped on that issue. As a matter of fact, we have not flip-flopped on any issue. So it's exciting. We've got to stay true to our principles. We've got to stay true to our message and keep doing what we're doing. What? So what questions do you guys have? about the national, anything going on on the LNC, any questions? Glenda. Uh, can you talk about the building, what's going on with buying the building? Oh, you're asking the wrong person Whoa. about the building. <laughs> uh, the, the, the building Real fund, estate. so we're, we're buying a building. Um, from an economic standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, we've been leasing space, renting space for the last, pretty much since the party's uh, existed. Where? In Washington, D.C. Got it. So we're, we're buying a building now, which is going to bring our costs down. We'll have a permanent fixture. We don't know where the building's going to be yet. We know we've, we've isolated it to the D.C. area. So it's, it's probably not going to be downtown D.C. It's going to be in probably in Alexandria or a, a pretty close place. But we are raising money right now. The more money we raise, the better building we can get. Um, we have some pretty stringent terms in, you know, as per our, uh, the motion that went out to buy the building. So we're not going to get hurt. You know, our costs are going to come down dramatically. So hopefully what that's going to do is give us a permanent fixture and give us the ability to, you know, spend that additional money that we've been throwing away on more activism. Yeah. Any other questions? I hear the air is very rarefied up there in D.C. Is that true? Oh, uh, D.C. is fun. <laughs> uh, they, they've got to be petrified of us, knowing oh, that we're okay. coming in full force. I mean, we've never done this before. You know, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball. Mine broke a couple weeks ago. But I think and I feel <laughs> that we can get some people elected within the next two election cycles and have them up there representing us. But we got to be resolute. we got to keep pushing every single yep. day. And talk to people. Get your neighbors, like we are talking about earlier, with Gail in the grocery store. Just hand people a business card. I do it all the time. All the time. Tell them what we're doing. Tell them one or two things. You know, pick a couple issues. Educate people. The people that initially thought, oh, Brad, you know, because my background's in finance, you know, and a lot of the people who I've dealt with are like, oh, you're going to go be one of those crazy libertarians. Yeah, so should you. We're all about capitalism. We're all about the free markets. And find something yeah. that touches everybody. But get them involved with the party. Invite them down. We have our state convention coming up in Nevada. We have 40 new people that we've registered who would never consider registering. Right. Yeah, and it, it's expensive in Nevada to register. But uh, but we're doing it. And, and get the youth involved. Yeah. Get the youth involved. We started an organization called the Young Libertarian National Alliance. It's the first and the only partisan youth organization for the Libertarian Party. We're really excited that we got our first chapter open in, um, in UNLV last year. That was a huge milestone. I've got between four and 12 interns coming into the Liberty headquarters, which is what we call my office now, every single day. And we're working on all these Liberty projects and they're excited. They're really, really excited. So get involved, get the youth involved, talk to everyone you possibly can. Any more questions? What's yes. the mess in Nevada turning out to be? Talk to me about that afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's something that myself and other members of the LNC and other leaders all across the country have been working on. It's a 527. It's set up. Um, we're not na recognized nationally because we don't want to be recognized nationally right now. But it's the Young Libertarian National Alliance. Y L N A dot org. Yeah. But they're not partisan, and we're working with them. Yes, work with them. And, and as a matter of fact, I, I reached out to uh, some of their leaders and said, hey guys, here's what I'm planning on doing. I don't want to invade on your turf. Can we work with this? And it, it was open arms, as long as we stay partisan. If we don't stay partisan, then probably not so much. What's that? They have to stay nonpartisan unless they want to come on board with us. I'm cool with that. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for that. mentioned that the uh, Sacramento Bee noticed we were in Sacramento. They had a small uh, blog post on their website this wow. morning. They Woo. mentioned the fact that we're going to be here at the West right. Steps. They also mentioned the fact that the Republicans are in town as well at the same hotel we're at. They're doing candidate training there. 
Mm, could be an interesting, interesting weekend yeah, for yeah. all of us, right? Yes. So uh, we are at the center of it, folks, and wow. thanks for being here. This is yeah. pretty important. Yeah. Very important. So next up, let me see. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> right? Oh, we'll do Judge Gray. Come on. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Judge Gray. I want to save you for the biggest problem. We'll bring you up again. Good things are happening. And if they can't happen in this political climate, in this economic climate, and in this anti-liberty climate, uh, we, we really should look inward at ourselves. I am here uh, after being with uh, Governor Gary Johnson for the past week on our Live Free campus tour. And I'm here to tell you, in fact, yes, yeah. that uh, as he says it, the kids get it. Yeah. And when I first talk with them, I, I tell them the truth, which is you're bankrupt and you are bankrupt. And then you go into the, we're spending 30 cents of every dollar is, is borrowed or printed, etc. We're galvanizing the people. And we've had really, really good turnouts uh, on these, of these kids all around the country. Uh, we started, that's right, we started in, uh, Miami of Ohio, then we went to uh, Hillsdale College in Michigan, then we were at uh, uh, University of Illinois in Champaign, last night we were at University of Missouri in St. Louis. Uh, I just wow. flew in from St. Louis this morning, uh, I will stay until Sunday morning, I will then go home, I'll be home all of Sunday and then Monday I fly out to Albuquerque and we have events there again and we'll go to Colorado, Boulder. Uh, then I go to Minnesota, and he goes to Wyoming, and then we meet back in Salt Lake City. So we are Woo. carrying this message, and the response is really, really good, really wow. favorable. But I ask the question when I go to these various things, how many people here are not libertarians, and not nearly enough people raise their hands? <coughs> we need to expand that. Us sitting around and agreeing how smart we are is never going to get it done. So we must, like you're saying, go out, talk to your neighbors, Talk, give people your cards, just talk, just ask questions. You don't need to be combative or, or confrontational. Just say, really, do you think that the war on drugs is working? Well, that answer is always mm. no. Do you think that we are in good shape financially? How do you think the future is financially for your, your child? What do you think about the encroachment of liberty uh, by their government? Uh, do you want, here's a good one, do you want your health care to be run by your local department of motor vehicles? Well, that's where, just ask <laughs> these questions and the answers just flow. The answers are simply there. So this is what we stand for and the, the atmosphere is with us. We're on the rise, we're on the march. We have the ideas, we have the people. My goodness, put yourself in my position. I go around the country and see such incredibly good, dedicated, caring, effective libertarians that are helping and working on these things. There just aren't enough of them, okay? We're having this rally. There aren't enough of us here. Why? Because we haven't spread that word. So that's what we do. We spread it. We've got the message. We've got the program. We stand for liberty. We stand for financial responsibility of all things. I know that's an amazing concept in today's world. But that's what we stand for. Don't get this stuff that we're closer to Republicans than Democrats. We're classic yeah. liberals. Yeah. You know, yeah. how could, how could Mr. Obama purport to have any liberal values at all since he has embraced the Patriot Act? Since he signed the National Defense Authorization Act? That he has drones flying overhead surveilling Americans? That's not liberal value. We stand for you. So it's great, it's good stuff. We're gonna have a lot of fun this weekend and then we're gonna be reinvigorated, keep going out there. And, and by the way, there's so many good people, but one of them is Kevin Takanaga. Not really behind the scenes all the time. He's in front, he's behind, he's all around, he's everywhere. Kevin, thank you, yeah. and the microphone again belongs to you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Well, I follow that. Um, <laughs> Parent. Oh, you first. Who wants to go first? You decide. That sounds like Fox News. Introduce <laughs> yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Glenda Parrot. I'm from San Bernardino County. I'm the, I'm the treasurer for San Bernardino, and I have been for several years. I also sit on the LPCA Executive Committee, and this year at convention, I'm running for Southern Vice Chair. Woo! All right. Thank you. So 
So we've been pretty busy down in San Bernardino County. We were very excited to come up here today because Tim Donnelly is going to be speaking and he will be meeting with several of us in his office. The best thing about Donnelly is that he is my assemblyman. We are in his district and I cannot wait to talk to him. So he has a bill that's been coming out that uh, Alex referenced and it's AB 351, which is the California Liberty Preservation Act. And what it does is it nullifies NDAA. It also Ooh. affirms the 4th, 5th, 6th, 8th, 9th, and 10th amendments of the Constitution. Yeah, yeah. It also issues a misdemeanor with jail time and a fine to any federal agent who tries to enforce those federal laws here in California. <laughs> and it's also a misdemeanor with jail time and a fine for any state agent who tries to enforce those laws here in California. So it was authored by our, con our assemblyman and we are very, very excited to meet with him today. So we're gonna thank him for that work and we are going to work with him. We've contacted his local office in Hisperia, which is also in our district, so that we could take a two-pronged approach for this bill to support this legislation. So I would encourage each and every one of you, find out if you don't know already who your assembly and senate representatives are, especially if they're up for re-election. I cannot stress enough to you how willing and happy even they are to talk if they are up for re-election. You will get their attention faster in election year than you probably will at any other time. So take advantage of it while you can. Uh, we've been speaking to high schools. We've been meeting with other groups, building some coalitions and doing some work in San Bernardino County. Uh, my plan for this year, to be honest with you, is I want us to get across our county lines. I want us to work together and support each other. We need to do more. We need to help each other. We need to be there for each other. I've already committed some help to Alex for his run in Encinitas, which is one of my most favorite cities in California mm -hmm. ever. So good luck to you, Alex. Thank you very much. And I would encourage all of you to please take the time to research and look and see what's going on. Find out what's going on in your backyard. Find out who your county district supervisors are. Find out where you can go and what you can do. Hit the city councils. City councils are really, really fun to talk to because they work for us, guys. It's our tax dollars. They work for us. So you have the right to be heard. You have the right to say what you want to say. Be respectful, of course, we are libertarians and we have liberty as our bottom line, but we need to encourage others and show them how liberty is the bottom line for all of us. So when we go in today, let's have fun, because if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and I am really, really excited. I hope that you all will support me on the floor when we vote for officers. And I will look forward to working with each and every one of you. I'd like to have everybody's name, everybody's email, everybody's phone number. And I will give mine to each and every one of you. And you are welcome to call me, contact me. My job is to listen and to be there for you and to support you as we work together for liberty. Thank you. Thank you, Glenda. Um, also from San Bernardino County is Ray Flostory the yeah, recently uh, elected chairman oh. there. That's going to come up. Yeah. Talk about what's going on down there. And do from, from that level. Let us know how, hey, this is, everyone thinks California is such a big state. Well, we have a lot of ground to cover, so San Bernardino is a huge piece of it. Good morning, how you Good doing? Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, chairman for San Bernardino County Libertarian Party. I also serve on the Judicial Committee for the state of California. Uh, Libertarian Party. Um, how many of you have heard of what's going on in San Bernardino? Bankruptcy. Yeah, right. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Generations of corruption within the San Bernardino City uh, government. Uh, we had a, long story short, we had a, a conference. We usually invite all these Southern California counties to come to a conference. Uh, we had it in, uh, was it Santa Fe Springs? Uh, at a place called Geezer's. Three gentlemen showed up that I didn't know. And I introduced myself, met them. Uh, one of the gentlemen is uh, owner, operator of a dispensary. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, basically due to special interest, I'm sure. But I, I also volunteer three days a week at this dispensary. They're, they're on board, they do a lot of community service work, trying to break down the stigma, to, you know, the stigma uh, that follows uh, cannabis advocacy. So we're working with them. Uh, there's a, a organization come together called Save Our San Bernardino, and we're a member of that. Uh, working with uh, the Chamber of Commerce, 
of religious groups, of concerned citizens. Uh, we've had one meeting so far. We're going to have another one. I believe it's June. Uh, we're trying to get together uh, to, to fix our city. I mean, I was born there, a lifelong uh, uh, re resident. My, my mother graduated from San Bernardino High School in 1953. My grandmother, 1928. So I got a, a vested interest in San Bernardino. And it, it's, it's good to see that there are other people that are coming to look for the liberty side. They've seen the other side, what they have to offer. And it's, they're not buying it anymore. And they know that the only way we're, we're going to get anything solved is remember to, to remain free. If we can't be free, why bother? So that's basically it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a couple guests here. So, John Snyder and a team from Young Americans for Liberty are here. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 All right. So you guys are uh, looking at the youth movement right here. <laughs> so Young Americans for Liberty. Um, there's over 300 chapters nationwide, um, with over 27,000 students and uh, growing very fast. So I started this chapter last semester, and it was just a couple of us, handful, five, ten people coming to our meetings. Uh, this semester, man, we have a, a minimum of 15 people, 20 students showing up. We have, uh, you know, guest speakers. We're always active on, on campus. You can find us in the quad protesting with our signs. Um, we're all about activism. Really, and that's what it comes down to grassroots, changing the minds of young people. Um, it, there's a lot of apathy going around. You know, our job is to kind of wake each other up, educate each other. Um, so that's really our goal on campus. Uh, keep expanding as a group um, and, and keep the li liberty movement going. So we, we come to things like this, the Libertarian Party Convention. Uh, it's great to have this here in Sacramento, right at our disposal. Um, next weekend, we're going to be going down to UC Fullerton. Uh, we're going to listen to Ron Paul, Rand Paul, Peter Schiff. You know, these are guys that are at the leading edge of libertarianism um, and, and helping us uh, create this movement and, and get other people on board. Um, so these are some of my members, Yesenia Cortez, Vice President, Michelle Manel. They take care of a lot of work. Um, yeah, we're posting blogs online. Uh, social media is, is huge for us. Facebook, sending out emails. So really uh, getting connected with community and other students on campus, other organizations and clubs. Um, this Tuesday coming up, we have a debate between college Democrats, Republicans, and now us. At first, All they right. were thinking about excluding us. Democrats wanted to say that, oh, well, libertarians can only come to a debate if college socialists arrive. Um, wow. So I was like, all right, cool. So you want them on your bench, um, and, you, <laughs> and you want to exclude us. Uh, I, I wasn't really comfortable with that, and I told them, look, if you want to exclude us from a debate, well, we're going to show up with signs, uh, posters, and, and a lot of people to protest this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're not going to stand silent. I'm not going to take that. Um, it, it's not going to come down to what happened in the national debates. I won't allow that yeah. on, on our campus. Yeah. Um, so sat down, talked with them. We are now in. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. And, and I, I love to brag about this, but we have some really smart members on our team. I mean, I, I really, I, I think we have a dream team of debaters, and I just can't wait to smoke them. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not doing anything um, Tuesday night, 5.30, uh, Sacramento State Campus, Mariposa Hall 1000. You can find all the information on our Facebook or email. Um, if you have a business card, pl please let us know. We can send out emails to you so you can receive all this information. Come watch, join in on the action. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a table tonight at the reception, right? Yes. Um, possibly, I know for sure tomorrow. Okay. Sunday. All right. So you guys will be all around all weekend. Okay. Yep. Great. Um, let's see. Okay. 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 So we've got a pretty full program this weekend. It's um, a lot of speakers. Um, so this this is a pretty historic convention because it's been about 
oh, I don't know, over a dozen years since the state party has been in Sacramento for its convention. I'm really glad to return. So, um, first time in my memory that we've been able to do this type of advocacy work and get to know the legislature while we're here. So, really happy about that. Hey, why don't you come up, Stephen? Let me bring another county chair up. Stephen Blakeman from Yolo County. That one, we go across the bridge over there and you're in Yolo County. All right. Yeah, I'm Steve Blakeman. I'm from Yolo County. We're across the river. Uh, we started uh, ooh, about three years ago with my wife and I in a meetup for libertarians. Wow. And a couple meetings, we had a friend come, his name's Gail Morgan. You can see him in the crowd yep. here someplace. There he is. And supporting us and telling us, you know, just keep it up. You know, for the first time they started it, was just a couple of them, but they've grown. Uh, next thing we have a, a, a man who came who's now a pretty good friend of mine now. His name Monica, he's my vice chair. Uh, not able to make it today, but he came. And the next thing we know, we had this lady move from Nevada named Isabel Isherwood. She's in the audience here. All right. Just keep working at, at talking to people. Isabel's meeting people in our community. She's retired and has opportunity to talk to people that I don't have a chance because I'm working full time in Sacramento. Uh, and I'm talking to people you know, here and there. We try to keep on getting our name out. We're tabling at Davis Farmers Market. Uh, I don't see him here. Mark Wilder is another man who's come and joined us just recently, and yeah, he's already beginning to be a real help to us. He's volunteering, so if you see Mark. Give him a handshake and tell him great for volunteering and it's good to see him here. He's also been, uh, he's also run for office in another county. And so we're looking forward to seeing what uh, what, can, what he can do for us to help us in our, in our work in Yellow County. Uh, so I would say, you know, if, if you're in a small county or if you're in a small community or your group's really small, just make this your motto. Don't quit. Yes. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. And just keep at it. You're in a long haul. Uh, movement and you gotta just look at the long vision and go for it. Yeah. Uh, I keep telling people who come to Yellow County and are working for us or come to work for us and sometimes they get discouraged and, and, uh, and wonder if we're really making any progress because we're still pretty small, we're still on the ground floor. And uh, I have to remind them, we're in Yellow County. When the state voted red, Republican, there were three counties that were blue. San Francisco, one other that I can't remember. Marin. In Yellow County. Yeah. So we're in a blue county in a blue state. And so we need to remember who we're reaching out to. We need to tailor our message to those folks and make them see, show them by persuasion that liberty is in their best interest and that who they've been voting for are, are they, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And so that's our message, to get them out, get out there and reach a lot of people who are on the left-hand side of the political spectrum and help them to see that we are, in a sense, in many ways, as, as Judge Gray reminded us, liberals, classical liberals, and true to the principles of our founding fathers, and they need to come on board with us and join, re <coughs> come back home. Right. Because they, the, their people have left the reservation as far as our founding fathers' principles and liberty and freedom, and they need to come back home and we need to have, you know, realize that we need to join together from both sides of the party spectrum and uh, stand for liberty and freedom, uh, individual responsibility, economic freedom, and that's the message we need to keep pushing. So I just encourage you to continue if you're small, keep pressing on, and just say don't quit. Uh, if you're if you're a larger group and you're having you have candidates and stuff, I'd say keep pushing those candidates keep getting that message out there and uh, like our friend from Santa Bernardino uh, reach out to the other counties start networking and connecting and I think together when we start uh, becoming a, uh, an organized larger group in California we're going to see fruit from all this hard work that we're doing now at the ground floor yep. so I'd say keep it up and don't quit Speaking of not quitting, our next speaker, Stephen Collette, hasn't learned how to quit yet. He doesn't know how to quit. It's not in his vocabulary. He keeps going and going and going, like the Energizer Bunny. But you got it, right? <laughs> I know so. Stephen. 
Hi, I'm going to be uh, speaking about uh, a number of things tomorrow at lunch. And uh, one of them is a coalition building. Uh, as, as many of you know, I ran in 2011 in a special election uh, for Congress in the 33rd, and, and I ran recently again for Congress. Uh, I have um, I developed some pretty strong relationships with some of the other candidates. I had trouble getting into some debates. Uh, by the first the first time I got into the debate, I gave my opening speech, and the uh, Democratic candidate who'd gotten 42 percent in the previous election came up and, uh, and said, I think Steve Collette just stole my speech. <laughs> she was an anti-war candidate. Uh, the Republican who got, the leading Republican ended up uh, speaking for me in my second campaign uh, afterwards. Um, I've de I developed a, a number of relationships with the, uh, the, the people that got this in the, can in the more recent campaign. I'm gonna talk about some of the lessons I learned from that. Uh, at um, UCLA, while I'm up here on this trip, I'm uh, going to speak with the Health and Human Services for a, a project I've been working on for about 15 months at UCLA under the direction of Michael Dukakis, where we're going to try to help California's budget by shifting non-violent drug offenders out of uh, the prison system into health and human services at an enormous cost savings uh, for the people. We, we just completed a, uh, a major report on the uh, medical marijuana program in Washington, D.C., uh, where we've, uh, we've pretty much summarized it as a model program, and uh, I expect it to get published. Uh, my, my, one of my other faculty advisors at, um, at UCLA has also just been uh, uh, given the um, consulting project, leading a consulting team to implement uh, legalization in Washington State and uh, so I'm, I'm going to share a whole bunch of those things and I'm going to talk about some messaging uh, and not only talking about uh, our freedoms but how not not allowing these freedoms affect people in terms of fairness and justice uh, those are terms uh, sometimes that we cringe at when other people abuse it but uh, we need to talk about what's fair and what is just. Uh, it's, it's not fair when um, people spike up their pensions and uh, everybody has to pay for it. It's, by the way, it's not fair to the old retirees that got out in 2000 that didn't spike theirs, that now their retirement system is being jeopardized by it. Uh, it's not fair to these people in, uh, you know, in these foreign countries when our drones go in and, and attack somebody else. Um, and we can talk all, all about all kinds of justice issues. Uh, this poor guy, this uh, poor guy who just got released from prison uh, down in, uh, in, in Arizona. Uh, terrible story about this fire, how he was railroaded. We need to stand up for that kind of injustice. Uh, we need to stand up for injustice when people, minorities, are, are disproportionately stopped, frisked, uh, interrogated, arrested on drug offenses, and uh, so I'm going to talk about that kind of messaging and trying to trying to increase our messages to, to people. And I'm going to talk about uh, coalition building, which is uh, very important. Uh, Jim Gray mentioned a little bit about it, but um, there are a lot of Democrats and a lot of Republicans who agree with us on many many issues, and uh, and even if we don't agree with them on everything. We can f form coalitions. Barney Frank, you know, who probably a lot of us don't like for his banking activities, uh, you know, got together with Ron Paul yeah, on yeah. HR 2306, yeah. the federal and marijuana prohibition. So he's our ally on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, pe people like uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, who's a socialist. He's, he's independent. Uh, he has been a very strong voice with us in talking about Federal Reserve transparency. Yeah. And uh, so we need to reach out to other people, Republicans and Democrats, uh, because it's amazing how many libertarians there are out there. And I, yeah. I, got, some, I got some really interesting and heartening stories about uh, hearing it from leading Republicans and leading Democrats, how libertarian people are becoming. And uh, 
don't know if you get a, you'll get a chance to talk about your uh, your second coming in school, right? Yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, I put together a, a proposal to teach a course that's on target, uh, tentatively entitled, tentatively entitled uh, "Taxes, Incentives, Equality, and Prosperity." And uh, I'm drawing from uh, all sides of the political spectrum, uh, and it, again reaching out to some people that we don't normally agree with. Uh, uh, I've got the, a chapter from Stiglitz's book on inequality, where he challenges, where he talks about the banking system and the Federal Reserve and how that, you know, brings so much inequality. Uh, we don't always agree yeah. with, uh, but. Um, uh, that's what my course is going to be be about, and uh, I'm also reaching out for anybody who uh, knows about some uh, research about uh, some of those issues. I'm very interested in getting feedback. Right. Okay, so, um, I don't want to say too many things. I'll just let the assembly member speak for himself and let us know where we are, what he's uh, got planned, and what he wants to do, and uh, come on up. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, what, a, what a privilege, what an honor it is to address people who love liberty. Because what we're facing today, the threat is not being addressed by the right or the left. Because most of them would like to increase the number of laws and regulations that restrict our freedom. The, the battle that lies before us is really a battle of whether or not we're going to defend the principles of the first revolution or fight it all over again. And if, and if on our watch we allow the basic freedoms that we have enjoyed for generations to disappear and evaporate, then we will have to answer to history. And so, I consider it my duty on a daily basis to answer the call that President John F. Kennedy laid out to us, which is he said, we need a nation of minute men, who, men and women, who not only take up arms, but who consider it the general purpose of their daily lives to defend liberty. And you know, you might ask, well, how do you do that? Well, let me give you one example. There's a bill, I'm sure you guys have heard of the NDAA. Yeah. And a lot of people just look the other way. And, and we're running a bill called AB 351, which will be heard in this building Tuesday. here on Tuesday. It just says, not on our soil. Yeah. Yeah. Not here in California, in what was once the freest state in the land. And you know, when the LA Times, no, no I'm sorry, it wasn't the LA Times because they refused to print the truth. It was the New York Times that analyzed California and said California has become the least free state of the union. Yeah. Now think about that. When I, when I moved out here and drove out here in my old VW bug, you know that you had to push start because because the battery cable was loose. I didn't realize that. <laughs> now, if I had the California state government work on my car, they would probably charge me you know twelve thousand dollars to invent some green electrical component to get the car to run instead of just a five dollar battery cable. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really what our government does. It it, it 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 not only does it not work, but but it but it continually infringes on the basic. God-given constitutional rights that were paid for with the blood of our forefathers. You know, when they said, we're willing to pledge our, our lives, our treasure, and our sacred honor, those weren't just words. They backed them up. And they backed them up with the Second Amendment. They put the Second Amendment right in there because they knew that when you give a government too much power, that government will do the same thing that every dictator has done since the beginning of time, which is abuse that power. Yeah. And the only antidote 
to that is to empower people who don't want power. We need to find ordinary citizens. I would rather have a garbage man passing my laws or a plumber or a contractor or a teacher or, well, I'm not going to say lawyer, anything but a lawyer. <laughs> Or doctor, or a doctor, <laughs> or a businessman, a housewife, or <laughs> housewife. housewife. Sure, a housewife. Yeah. They know because the they are are the keepers of the common sense. Yeah. You know, when we sit at our kitchen tables and balance our budget, we can't levy a tax on our neighbor, <laughs> much as we might like to, especially when they get a new car. There, I don't wouldn't favor a new car tax on my neighbor so that I can get a car. That, but that's what they do in this building, and then and they buy constituencies with it. Yeah. And and ultimately, after three years of service in this dark place, I have concluded that the battle lines are between the political class and the people. And the political class wants power so that they can further their own career. And I know it seems almost too simple, but it's true. When, when you can sell out the people and raise taxes, and then you get a job for yourself, and then you're, and then you're, and then the, 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 the harness of the great engine of power here in Sacramento is put at your behest so that you can pass some reform, if you want to call it that, then essentially you have hijacked the power that was meant for the people. And the reason the power exists is to increase liberty and to increase freedom for all of us. You know, because I take it seriously when, when the Declaration of Independence, the foundational document by which we divorced the tyrant 3,000 miles away, that foundational document laid out a plan and it said the sole and most important purpose of government is to secure these inalienable rights and that they derive from the Creator. So we have a direct hotline to the Creator who imbued us with the power and we lend it to the government but that power is intended to be used to secure those rights and they lay them out. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And yet, every time you turn around and pick up the newspaper or turn on the radio, turn on the television, you hear of bills and ideas coming out of this building to strip you of your rights, whether it's the Second Amendment, to take away your liberty, to, to I don't know, you might want to consume a large caffeinated beverage. <laughs> of your own choosing. <laughs> you might decide that 16 ounces is what you need on a hot sunny day and you might want to drink Coca-Cola. I kind of like it. <laughs> now I have to deal with my wife, but that's a different matter. I shouldn't have to deal with a government that thinks that it has the right to protect me from myself. That's right. Because that was never in there. And you, you cannot pursue happiness if you're not free. And if they strip away our Second Amendment right to self-defense, but not only to self-defense. The Second Amendment is not only to defend our, our lives and our property, but it was meant to defend our freedom from tyranny and from a tyrannical government that knows best. And who would have thought in the year 2013 that we would be faced with a government whose daily purpose 
is tyranny. Is literally coming into our businesses and dictating to us what we can do. And, and, and you might say to me, well, th those are regulations that are passed down from a board or a commission. Well, where did they get the power to regulate? They got it from a law. And, and, and when they talk about wanting to ban semi-automatic weapons, I agree with them if they're talking about the car board or, or the state water resources board that seems to have an unlimited amount of ammunition to, to assault the freedom of people who might want to work in a certain industry. When they tell us, you can't work at a farm anymore. We don't want farms in California. We're going to regulate you out of existence. We don't want heavy equipment being operated in this state. So we're going to regulate you out of existence one regulation at a time. It die you, you have entire industries that are dying a death of a thousand cuts by regulation. That's right. And you might say, what can we do about that? Well, there is one thing we can do about that that would change everything. And I know that each and every one of you is committed to doing whatever it takes. Because you're here on a Friday afternoon when you could be off pursuing happiness. Enjoying yourself. Yeah. Pursuing happiness. Pursuing happiness. <laughs> Amen. I like that answer. The one individual who holds all the power to direct policy and has more authority over the regulators than anyone else is the governor. And if we replace the governor of this state with somebody who believes in freedom, then we will be on a very different path. Can you imagine if we peopled and populated the boards and commissions of those regulated with those who are affected by the regulations? So instead of having regulation without representation, now we have input, and we have the consent of the governed. And, and, and we are consistent with the Constitution, and we are consistent with the Declaration, and we are consistent with the intent of the Founders as far as we can intuit them. And I think if we were to move on to a track where we empowered the people of this state to have a much greater say in the legislature, can you see this? You may have thought that the greatest threat to the state of California was unemployment. You may have thought the greatest threat to California was crime with, with thousands of criminals being released on our streets. You may have thought that, that the greatest threat to California actually came from the government. And I would agree with you because I believe the government is the greatest threat to our liberty. And whether they're coming for our guns or our livelihoods, or our freedom, they come by the same tyrannical principle. This here is what the California Air Resources Board considers to be the greatest threat to Californians, which is fugitive dust. Not ordinary dust, but fugitive <laughs> dust that escapes up off of the ground if you happen to walk down a road or drive a motor vehicle and, and they've, they've created a coloring book for, for, for kids so they can brainwash them and indoctrinate them. And, and they've got all kinds of photos and they talk about how you could use this as a tool against a neighbor you may not like. Now think about that. Now you're empowering people to fight with their neighbors and you're making the government the, the referee so that you can abridge the freedom of your neighbor whose fugitive dust may escape and cross the border into your yard. I'm not making this up. They are, have sent a team of Berkeley graduates around with dust thermometers, and they are currently <laughs> testing and trying to gin up justification for this regulation. And, and you may laugh and say, well, wait till you see what the fines do, because the California Resources Board has a $652 million budget. It is a job-killing, freedom-sucking machine. Yeah. 
that deprives liberty everywhere it goes, destroys entire industries, and puts the financial health of our state at risk. So we should pay attention to what they do because they don't pay attention when business owners come in there and testify at a hearing. They laugh, they cut them off, they turn off their microphones. So I've been thinking, how can we get the attention of the people? What, what is the mechanism by which this could be a, this story could have a different outcome? Because if, if all of us are sitting there on a Saturday morning drinking our coffee, you know that, you ever had one of those cups of coffee where you just pour the black coffee in there and it just has that little froth? And you know it's gonna be so delicious. And you're just sitting, and, and you've got a little free time and you're gonna read something. And you happen to open the newspaper. And just think, if on that Saturday morning you read a story about a farmer who got fined $37,000 because his pickup truck kicked up some dust, or a tomato farmer because he didn't wet down his crop appropriately. Well, when you wet down a tomato crop, you destroy it. Yeah. But the regulators don't know that because all they did is go to graduate school. They've never got their hands dirty. Because we don't have input from those who are being regulated, not real input, not power. They don't have a seat at the table on that board, but if we had a freedom-loving governor, they would. So how do I get their attention? And I thought about it. What do Americans love more than anything else? We love sports, right? We worship sports. <coughs> So I talked to some friends of mine in Hollywood and I asked them if they would help me make a little movie, about a minute, 30 second movie that we could send out all over the internet and believe me, it would go viral. And we have somebody dressed in a full hazmat suit that says the car of Dirt Devil Patrol on the back in bright white. And then we have a bunch of cops, three of them, four, maybe dressed like these fine gentlemen who are protecting us here, who are fully with their badges and their and their firearms and their helmets, and they are there, but they're Hollywood cops, and they're there as part of this, and 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 we get the perpetrator. It's a nine-year-old boy sliding into second base, and as he slides into second base, we go out there with a the dust thermometer and we test the dust, and it, and we determine indeed it is fugitive dust. <laughs> and the police, my fake police, put the guy up against the nine-year-old up against the the fence, and, and and we arrest him and handcuff him. What do you think those parents are going to do? Don't steal second base. <laughs> They're going to have something to say because one of the most volatile groups of people to ever people the earth are little league parents. So they're going to be very interested in by what authority is their nine-year-old being arrested. And that's what I'm going to walk out and say, this arrest is a hoax right now because this is not yet the law of the land, but it could be. You think they'll pay attention then? I think we can do that. I think that's, people have this big conversation in, in, in within the conservative movement about how do we reach more people and educate them and get them to really feel the loss of their freedom and understand what's at stake. Because all of us feel this burning passion to stand up. for the greatest experiment in liberty that has ever been conducted. And we are so privileged to be Americans, to be free, to, 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 to be able to stand here on the steps of our capital at the seat of power and say whatever we want because we have an absolute right to lawfully assemble and seek redress of our grievances from our government. And these fine law enforcement officers here are not here to stop us. They are here to protect that right. Think about that. That's what's at stake, is a system that does work. And maybe we don't talk often enough about what is great about being an American, but I cherish that. And this seat that I have does not belong to me. It belongs to the people.
and I consider it my duty everywhere I go with every minute that I possess this seat and that I occupy this seat to increase liberty, to beat back the incursions of a tyrannical government. And that is why I have opened an exploratory committee to run for the governorship of the great state of California. Yeah. Woo! And I would ask each of you, regardless of party affiliation, because as I said at the outset, neither party has the answer. Both of them have become the problem. We need, we the people need to unite on uh, what we agree on. And we need to go forth and we need to restrict the government and handcuff them with the Constitution. And that which is not enumerated ought not to be done. And that which belongs to the state belongs to the state. And every power that is not enumerated to the federal government should accrue to the people. And that is why I'm also asking for you to show up here and stand up for my bill that would make it illegal for any federal authority to indefinitely detain anyone on California soil because I think we have to stand against the erasure of the habeas corpus protections, due process protections that was conducted by President Barack Obama in 2012. And I don't care that he says he isn't going to use the power. I don't trust him or anyone under the color of authority. And I refuse to give them power that rightfully belongs to the people because we have no right to give them that power. That power is illegal, it is unconstitutional, and it is just plain wrong. And so thank you. Thank you for gathering here. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for having a convention that is focused on how we can take back our liberty and our freedom and how we can be the freest, most prosperous state in the union again. God bless you and Godspeed. He'll be in his office later for us to, to meet with him. And with that, um, I'd like to wrap it up here. I want to get our teams assembled so that with uh, two o'clock rolls around, we're ready to go. So uh, for those of you who are in the advocacy training, come up to the front. Okay, and once you guys split into groups of, um, let's see, split in groups of four right now, okay? So all of you guys who came up for the advocacy training who are gonna be here to help out, please come forward. All right, you guys are gonna be my team leaders here, all right? So pick teams of, of we have eight people here. Pick teams of, um, we got one team here. You guys gonna team up? Brett, you and uh, Ken? All right, why don't you, raise your, why don't you guys raise your hands? I've got um, Don and Danny. Danny? Who else? 